right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I was just scrolling through some emails and somebody suggested that I did a video about the best bang for your buck. Now, although I'm not a fan of that expression, I do like the idea. There are so many bargains out there in the used car world. Cars which started out life really expensive, and now thanks to depreciation, aren't. So I thought today we'd go through some of the best bargains out there. Right, let's head on over to Australia. This is my favourite subject really, so let's see what bargains are out there. Straight away, I'm thinking we should probably head over to Mercedes. Most Mercedes don't hold the values very well, so you can pick up some genuine bargains. I don't want this whole video either to be about big gas guzzling cars that nobody can afford to run, so I'll try and make it somewhat sensible. Sensible, but still interesting. Let's look at E-Class Coupes then, and E-Class Convertibles. I think these are great cars, they look the part, and they're quite sensible to run depending which engine you go for. We'll choose from sort of a 2012, so that way you get Bluetooth and things like that. We'll go on body type, convertible, and coupe. I mean, look at this one, for example. This is more than I kind of planned on showing you, but it's a facelift 2016. It's 12995. It's a 2.1 litre turbo diesel engine, which are good for about 45 miles per gallon. And you get all the luxuries that you'd expect from a Mercedes. The cost new of that would have been about £40,000, so it's lost an awful lot, and it's still only done 79,000 miles. There's loads of life left in that. But, I mean, they're out there even cheaper, so let's price this low to high. I'm not going to show you any with stupid mileage, but around about 100000 I think. You can't really, can't really go wrong. Take a look at that one. 6450. It's an E250, again, with a 2.1 litre diesel engine and it's a sport model, so it does look a little bit sportier. You've got the nicer AMG style wheels, and it's pillarless. Everybody likes a pillarless coupe, don't they? 6,450, and it's only done 85,000 miles. Now that's the coupe, but I particularly like the convertible. Let me try and find you a convertible. Because most of these E-Class convertibles and coupes were from an era where diesels were preferable, most of them are diesel. But there's really, well, unless you live in a utilized zone, there's nothing wrong with the 2.1 litre turbo diesel engine. You're probably better off going for the 3 litre, just got a bit more poke. So take a look at this one, this is a 2012 E350, so it's a 3 litre turbo diesel. It's a Sport. How classy is that? And it's on at 7,820, 7,800 pounds. They just have a timeless quality about them, a bit like the previous model CLK, which I think still look good. So all that for 7,800 pounds, bargain. While we're looking at sporty Mercedes, let me show you these. Now, many of you will know that I'm a big fan of the Mercedes SL. So if we look at the R231 model, which came out in 2012 or 13, these are seriously tempting. So take a look at this one, for example. It's a 2013, it's a 3.5 litre petrol, which will be fairly sensible to run. You'll still get early 20s around town and mid to high 30s on a run. So it won't break the bank, really and you get all this for less than £20,000. This is a car that when it was new would have cost £60,000, £70,000. I don't think they're as pretty as the R230, but it is a much more modern Mercedes, so it'll be easier to live with. You'll have sat-nav, Bluetooth, all that sorts of stuff. Seriously impressive car, that. And it's only done 51,000 miles. If you can stretch the budget a little bit, then you could get an SL400, which uses a 3-litre petrol. Now this one's 27,995, but it is the facelift model. It's got that nice pale interior. That's an awful lot of car for the money, isn't it? I'd love something like that, to be honest. Really cool. And it's only done 24,000 miles. That's dropped 50,000 pounds of its value. In terms of depreciation, something like that would have started out life at 70,000 pounds or 75,000 pounds, and it would have lost probably half of its value within the first three years. But then the thing with depreciation is it kind of, it kind of levels off. So now it's reached 20,000 pounds or you know, whatever it was, 25,000 pounds. Depreciation is much more stable. That's what I'm looking for. It's sort of minimal. So it will just sort of you know, tail off nicely. So that's the kind of car that you could keep for five years or 10 years, and you won't lose an awful lot of money on it. Maybe £5,000 over that sort of period, plus servicing costs and running costs, obviously. But it's not stupid, is it, really? I think it makes far more sense than buying a brand new one, anyway. Right, while we're still on Mercedes, let me show you something else. Before we look at any more, I just want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you want to protect yourself while you're shopping online or doing online banking, then you really need to check out Surfshark. They're a VPN service provider. 
It protects you so that all your data and your details and your IP address are hidden, so cyber thieves can't view it. In addition to that handy feature, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can spit at your bandwidth and make your device stream things much more quickly. The last thing I want to do is get my card details stolen or my bank details hacked, and since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, that just hasn't happened. Another good thing about Surfshark is you can change your location settings so you can watch your favourite content from online streaming services like Netflix. You know how sometimes you want to watch a show or a film and it says it isn't available? Well with Surfshark you can change your location settings so that it thinks you're in a different territory. Then all of a sudden it becomes available. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and you can use it on multiple devices. It's cheap and easy to use. We're all online a huge amount of time these days, so you just don't know how much information you're putting out there. So it's better to be protected rather than not. Especially if you frequently use insecure public Wi-Fi spots, such as at airports, train stations and other places. If you're interested in checking out Surfshark and you want to get an even better deal, then use my promo code HYPECORTOS and you'll get three months extra, totally free. Or click the link below in the video description. Or visit surfshark.deals forward slash HYPECORTOS. Right, back to these depreciated cars. Now, we're going to look at S-Classes, but I haven't completely lost the plot because some of them are quite, quite affordable. Quite sensible to run, actually. So, now we're going to look for the 2015 onwards model. I think it came out in late 2014, 2015. You'll find that a lot of these were used as chauffeur cars, so some of them, I mean, look at that one, it's on 260,000 miles. But, if you're prepared to spend about £20,000 or 22, then you'll get yourself a nice one with around... 90, 100,000 miles on the clock. So, right, here's an example for you. This is a 2015, it's only had one owner from you, and it's done 100,000 miles. And most importantly, it's the AMG line model. They look really imposing. And that'll do 30 miles per gallon around town and 55 on a motorway run. In fact, let's check the actual figures. How cool is that, though? I've got a soft spot for S-Class. Uh, right, huh? it's even more impressive than I thought. So according to this, I mean, you could probably take 10% of these figures. Around town, 40 miles per gallon, and on a motorway run, 60 miles per gallon. And the road tax is only 240 pounds a year. And it's Euro 6, which means it's ULES compliant. 20,000 pounds, it's such a bargain. Right, let's change manufacturers then. So the next one, this might come as a bit of a surprise to you. But, thanks to the fact that most EVs now, or the bottom's just fallen out of the EV market, let's move over to Tesla. I looked at these the other day and I just couldn't believe how cheap they were. So, I think the best looking Tesla model is the Model S. You can pick these up for well under 20 grand now and I just I can't get my head around it. I mean, take this one for example, it's done 100,000 miles, but it's a 2015-64 Reg. It's in quite a nice colour red. It's the 85 model. So, 362 brake horsepower, or the equivalent of, for £19,950. Some of these early Model S's as well have free supercharging for life, which means you can pull over at the motorway service stations and charge your car for free. I need to do a video with the Model S, don't I really? I'm no, I don't think I've ever had a Tesla on the channel thinking about it. I'm not a huge fan of EVs, as I've mentioned before, but if I were to buy an EV, I would certainly look at Teslas. If That would be my go-to, I think. The good thing about them is you can check the battery health level like you can on your, on your iPhone. You go into the big screen and you can check the condition of it. Here's one for you then. This is a 2015 one owner done 76,000 miles. And it's 23,000 pounds. Don't forget you've got zero road tax. You've only got the cost of the electricity. And that's it. Something like this as well in terms of range will give you... Well, it says 305 miles. So realistically, you're probably talking... 260, 270. Most people could live with that. While we're still looking at Teslas, let's look at the Model 3. Now these are really cheap as well. This is the most affordable Tesla. And again, prices start at around 23,000 pounds, but they're much newer. So for 23 grand, you'll get a, a 2020 model. I don't think they're as good looking as the S. In fact, they're nowhere near as good looking as the S. They're a bit sort of top heavy, aren't they? They remind me of a, an AMC Pacer or something, but still, if I were to have an EV, then I would consider something like that, definitely. I got him one recently as a taxi, and I was quite impressed with it. Saying that, I'd had about three pints, so I'm quite easily pleased. Uh, right, what else? Next one then, let's go back to Germany. So, we're going to go to Bavaria. Okay, in terms of bang for your buck, 
I hate that expression, you can't beat the i8. I've done a video with an i8 recently, but I just think it's so much car for the money. You get real supercar head turning looks, sensible running costs, free road tax for 36 grand. Take a look at this one for example. So this is a 2015, it's done 72,000 miles for 36,500 pounds. You get those butterfly doors. I really enjoyed using that white one that I did a video with. In a straight line, it is properly quick as well. You know, if you were to compare that to a 2015 Audi R8, you'd be paying double for the Audi R8 and have double the running costs or more. So as a used car buy, it's really tempting that, really tempting. Right, so while we're looking at eyes, let's look at the other bargain of the BMW range, the i3. Now again, I couldn't believe how much these had dropped. You can pick these up from around 8,000 pounds. The important thing to look out for though, or at least in my opinion, you need to look out for one with a range extender. So it's often called in adverts a Rex, R-E-X, or range extender. So you can buy the i3 as a, a pure battery EV that you just plug into the wall and you'll get 90 miles out of it. But that wouldn't really work for most people. Or you can buy one with a range extender, which has basically got a, an onboard generator. So it's got a petrol engine as well that you put fuel in, and then that will top up the batteries. So in theory, you could just drive it around on that uh, and never actually plug it into a wall socket. Right, here's one for you then. 2015, it's in Wimbledon. It's done 54,000 miles and it has the all important range extender. They're a quirky looking car. I've never driven one. I really should get one on the, uh, on the channel. I quite like them though. Quite like the fact that BMW dared to think outside the box. So in terms of range, you will get around, well, it says 93. Realistically, you'll probably get 75, 80, depending on the weather and how you drive it from the battery pack alone. But as soon as that runs out, you can just run it on fuel. For nine grand, you've got something there that will last you for, for many years and you can drive it into cities without handing over the contents of your wallet. While we're still looking at BMs, let's go back to conventional fuel. So if you've got a, a bigger budget, let's have a look at eight series. Now these, I couldn't believe again how cheap they were. You don't see an awful lot of them on the road and, I mean, look at this one. This one's a 2018, it's only done 46,000 miles and it's 37 grand. Whenever I see one, I always stop and stare at it because I just think it looks like a £100,000 car. That's an 840D, so that will use the 3 litre straight 6 BMW engine, which is a gem. It'll be quite fuel efficient, that, as well. You'll get probably 35 miles per gallon around town and 55 on a run, so certainly won't break the bank or break your wallet. I couldn't really do a video about best value for money and not include the 8 series. They've been around now for five years, but they still look fresh. That one's got that saddle brown interior as well. And because it's only four or five years old, it'll have things like Apple CarPlay and things like that. If your budget can't stretch to an eight series, let's have a quick look at six series. So you want to go for something like a 2011. And again, I mean, you can pick these up. Look at that one, eight and a half grand. That's only an SE, which does look a little bit boring. You need to try and find an M Sport like that. Look at the difference. Nicer wheels, just looks far sportier. I mean, that one's a Cat S to be fair. But for around £12,000, you'll get yourself a nice one. And again, the 640 diesel basically uses the same engine as that 840 diesel. That's a 2012 and it has done 101,000 miles. And it's a 640D. I still think that really looks the part. It's got a nice pale interior as well. 313 brake horsepower. I've done a couple of videos with these over the years, so if you do want to know a bit more about it, then check out my uh, back catalogue. Right, this next option is a bit more interesting, and you'll think that I've lost the plot completely, but bear with me. I swear I haven't. Let's look at Maseratis. Now, you'll think by driving a Maserati, you'll need really deep wallets to run a 4.7 litre V8, but a lot of the modern ones have a diesel engine. Take, for example, the Ghibli. I don't particularly like the name, but I do like the car. So you can pick up a three litre V6 diesel Ghibli for, well, for less than 15 grand. This one's 13,995. Looks quite cool in white, doesn't it? They're good looking cars, those. It's only Euro 5, so it isn't ULES compliant, unfortunately. But look at that with its four exhausts. 275 brake horsepower and loads of features as standard. I haven't done a video with a Ghibli, but I did do a video with a, a diesel Quattroporte last year, I think it was. I was quite impressed with that. 
You have to tolerate the cheap Jeep Chrysler switch gear, but it is worth tolerating. It's just a cool car. So you can pick up a decent Ghibli for less than 15 grand. So let me show you another option. Let's have a look at the old four door. Now for a decent Quattroporta, you'll need the best part of 20 grand, but you get a slightly bigger car, slightly more car anyway. And again, I just think they're gorgeous. You've got a beautiful interior, beautiful exterior, and the running costs of a five series. Just seems like a no brainer. And they're just nowhere near as common as an Audi A6 or a Mercedes E-Class or a 5 Series. Servicing costs will be slightly higher if you take it back to Maserati, but a 3 litre diesel like that, I just use your local mechanic. Or, you know, you can find a decent specialist. There are plenty out there. Right, the last option then while we're at Maserati is the Levante. So let's look at this one, for example. £25,000 will buy you a diesel Levante, 271 horsepower, in that gorgeous blue colour. I genuinely run something like that. 2017, that one's only done 71,000 miles. According to this, it'll do 34 miles per gallon around town and 43 on a motorway run. And the road tax is only 365 pounds a year. So much car for the money that, isn't it? So much car. I really like that. And the last one on this list then is Audi. So to get a real bargain from Audis, I think you've got to look at their S and RS range. Now, one car that jumped out at me straight away, which I would love, is an older S7. And the Audi A7 in general is a really gorgeous looking car, but the S7 uses a 4 litre twin turbo V8. I just find it staggering that you can get a 420 brake horsepower V8 in a gorgeous body like this for 20 grand. Granted, it will drink fuel a little bit. I say a little bit, quite a lot. This will do, well, let's find out. According to Autotrader, 21 around town and 37 on a run. So you're probably talking realistically 17, 33, 34. But happily, it isn't high road tax. Well, it isn't in the highest road tax bracket. It's only 395 pounds a year, not 695. Again, I just couldn't really do a video like this and not mention the S7. That one is in, is it scuba blue, that one? I think it's scuba blue. Such a cool car, that. 21,470. It's only done 60,000 miles. If you want something even quicker than the S7, then take a look at this. I can't believe how, well, affordable these are. The Audi RS5. You can pick up some ropey examples for around 15,000 pounds, but for 20, you'll get yourself a genuinely nice one. Let's skip a couple of pages here. So take a look at this one, for example. This one's a 2011, so it is a little bit on the older side, but it's only done 40, 43,000 miles. It's 19,995. I mean, look at the size of those exhausts. You'd fit your head in there, wouldn't you? It's only had two previous owners. It's in that Daytona Pearl color, which is one of Audi's best. And you'd be running around in a genuine RS Audi for the same price as a, a brand new Fiesta. Well, you can't even buy a brand new Fiesta, can you? But you get the message. In terms of performance, this will do 0 to 62 in four and a half seconds, and it's got a 444 brake horsepower, 4.2 litre V8. It's just unbelievable. That has lost around 50,000 pounds in value. So again, definitely worthy of this little list. So I think that's about it. That's all I could think of. But if you can think of any yourself that I haven't featured, let me know in the comments below. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also TikTok. I'll leave the links below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.